and welcome back to my channel. It's been a good while since I've spoken to you guys anything about medical school or my life as a medical student and I was recently asked to write an article about things that I wish I'd known before I applied or started medical school and this really made me think because I've come up with five big major topics that I feel would be very useful to you guys if you're in the process of applying or if you're about to start your medical degree in sort of September, the new academic year. So if you're new, my name is Esgi and I'm a GP trainee who is currently working in a North London hospital. I am on maternity leave at the moment and I go back to work in June, but I did my medical degree at UCL and I did it as a graduate student on an undergraduate course. So essentially that means I've gone through eight years of university, five of which were in medical school, and I've been a doctor for a total of three years, four years, <laughs> four years, and I have a lot of wisdom to share. So this video was kindly sponsored by Skillshare. It's an amazing online resource which has loads and loads of classes available for you to take from the comfort of your own home. It's an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. It's for those who are lifelong learners, which you will be as medics and doctors. It involves a combination of video lessons and a class project and it has classes to fit your schedule and skill level and members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on project and feedback from a community of millions and it's specifically curated for learning meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay ahead and focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's only less than £10 a month for your annual subscription. So don't forget to head in the description below to click on the link that was kindly given to me for you guys only. And now that we're done with that little snippet, let's get into our video. So the first big topic for me, which was very important, was finances. And hear me out. I came from a family with one working parent. We were very lucky that we had a roof over our heads. We had, you know, hot meals to eat in the evenings. The reason I say this is because not everybody has this luxury and I don't want to talk about it as norm. That meant that when I was starting my degree, particularly at medical school, I really had to think about finances. As when I started my degree, it was the first year that we were charged £9,000 in tuition fee. And for me, it was a big hit, but I wasn't going to allow that to get in the way of my dream. So my big advice would be before you take out masses and masses of student loans is to have a look at the financial support that is available to you. This may be in the forms of scholarships, grants, bursaries, and also the NHS bursary that you need to take into account, particularly in the last um, years of your medical degree. Now, I didn't factor these in and I sort of done it haphazardly as I went along, but I took out a greater student loan than I actually needed to. And that meant that when I graduated, I had a hefty debt to pay. And believe it or not, even as a doctor, the amount of money that's cut out of my paycheck to go towards my student loan is actually less than the amount of interest that is applied to my debt. So the, although I've been paying off my student loan for the past three years, I've actually accumulated more debt. And thinking about that, it makes me really annoyed, angry. And I just thought, should have thought about this um, a little bit better when I was a student. So bear in mind things like scholarships, you can find them on your university's websites, or sometimes they're advised through emails that come through to your student email mailbox directly. You may be eligible for grants just based on your family income so they're often means tested and also bursaries as well actually for one of the scholarships i applied for i think it was a no it was a grant i ended up being invited to have lunch with princess anne princess anne in addition to other students in this building by the river thames i can't quite remember i think it was like fishmongers or something it was like a huge place and I was like, wow, you know, financial difficulties do take you places sometimes. And that was one of the really nice parts of knowing places to apply for and the help that was out there for you. Definitely have a look into those options before you take out your maximum loan that you're eligible for. 
The second thing I'd say is that during medical school, particularly during your clinical rotations, you are expected to go to different hospitals. So as part of your training process, they cannot send you to the same hospital for you to go to all of your specialty training like cardiology, respiratory, obstetrics and gynaecology for example. There's usually two to three hospitals that the university is affiliated with that you end up rotating around to get experience of the different specialties. Now these hospitals may not be in the same city and even if they are they might be quite far away. So you, you will be expected to travel, pick everything up, all your clothes or all your supplies and your work and everything and pack them in a bag and move somewhere for three months and then come back. That's sort of what happened with me, for example. Although the university was affiliated with three main hospitals that we rotated around for our, our main rotations, some of the hospitals were either outside of London or they were quite far away from the university. Um, and that's when we got offered accommodation. So you have to be flexible, you have to bear in mind that you need to study in different places and different flats and accommodation and different libraries, etc. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're thinking about your medical degree. Number three is studying. So yes, university and particularly a medical degree is difficult. It has a lot of subjects and a lot of knowledge base. And, you know, there's lots of lectures and rotations, etc. But that doesn't mean that you just need to go to the library day in, day out and have no social life. And this is actually an area that I flopped in majorly. I totally disregarded the whole social life of university because I was so fixated on doing well in my degree. And so I didn't sign up to any societies. I didn't sign up to sports teams. And I wasn't very involved in that amazing student community that there is in the university. Because if you think about it, you have to be able to do well academically, but then also balance that out with a good social life. And that's all part of de-stressing. And that is a key skill to have when you're a doctor. You have to be able to go to work, go through all the stresses and all the anxieties and all the upsetting things that you see and all the exams and the training that's involved afterwards as well and balance that with either meditation, socialising, sports, etc. And it's all part of that work-life balance that is really important to embrace as a student. So because I didn't do that when I was in medical school, I kind of struggled with this when I graduated. But because the constant sort of worry about exams was no longer there, I was then able to focus more on my social life. So, for example, even if it's things like going out after work with your colleagues for a drink at the pub or, you know, going down to central London if you live far from it um, to have dinner with your friends and just that kind of stuff. Really make sure that you are able to balance the two and sort of coming off from that, um, you're going to say, oh, you're telling me to socialise, but then you're also telling me to work hard. Like, what the hell? I'd say that the medical degree and any other university degree really is, is quite different than A-levels and the study skills that you use for it is different. So personally, what I used to do, for example, with A-levels is go to my classes, do my homework and my coursework. And then the big bulk of revision that I would do would be sort of in the Christmas break or the Easter break just before the actual exam. So I'd essentially cram in everything and make sure that everything was like fresh in my mind. But with medical school, because there's so much knowledge that you need to get through, you just can't do that. And if you do try to, you may get through, but it's going to be so super stressful. So I'd say that to treat the degree is like a marathon. So from the second or third week onwards, you know, after your freshers week and everything is over, you start to keep on top of your notes, keep on top of your revision. So that it's, it's easier for you when you get round to the exam and you can ramp up your revision a little bit before exams and do well, rather than sort of not doing anything the whole year and try to cram everything in the three to four weeks before the exams, because that is really hard and it's not worth putting yourself through that. And remember that, you know, with other subjects, sometimes um, what students want to do is sort of cram, do the exam and forget about it, complete their degree, get their degree and sort of go into a field of work where they may not always use every aspect of um, what they learned. However, with medicine, you end up using about 80 to 90% of everything that you learned in real life as a doctor. So don't treat it in a way where it's like a cramming in information to pass your exam. Treat it as 
this is the information that I need to gather and remember and sort of digest because I'm going to be using this on a day-to-day -day basis when I become a doctor looking after my patients. Because trust me when I say that, there is very little space for any error in the profession that you're about to do. And the fourth point that I'll touch on is that how well you do in medical school will not define how well of a doctor you're going to become. So in medical school, you are um, ranked into deciles. So after you sit your exam, you will be given a rank from decile 1 to decile 10, decile 1 being the highest and 10 being the lowest. You know, there are some non-academic skills that you will gain throughout medical school, such as good communication, showing empathy to your patients, good listening, good management and organisational skills that are very important in addition to your academic knowledge. So if you don't get the decile or the top grade that you were hoping to get, it doesn't mean that you're not going to graduate as a good doctor. Doctor. And coming off from that as well, my last point, which is it's a sensitive topic for me because um, this is what I struggled with a lot. And that is I saw medicine and becoming a doctor as my identity. And I, as Esgi, was a medic and I was going to be a doctor and that was my life. And I sort of totally forgot that, you know, I was someone's sister, I was someone's partner, I was someone's friend. I was more in life than just being a medic so if you apply for medical school and you don't get in it does not mean that you are a failure and it doesn't mean that not being a doctor is going to define the rest of your life there is going to be that stressful sort of acute period that you go through where you feel a bit down but once you pick yourself back up you can either apply for medicine again you know you can persevere and say no this is actually what i want and keep on going or don't be afraid to sit back and say, is there anything else I can do with? Because trust me, um, if you can find something that you're going to be happy with as well, your life will adapt and you will also be happy in whatever avenue you choose if that isn't medicine. So hopefully those five points were useful for you guys. Like I said, going through eight years of university, I feel like I have a few bits of wisdom to share. And I hope that if you are applying for medical school or about to start medical school in the new academic year, these things are just notes that you keep away in your brain. Don't do the mistakes that I did. Enjoy medical school. Look into your finances and make sure that you work steadily towards your exams. And also thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to head into the description below to click on the link. The first thousand of you guys will get a trial membership that they offer and you could use some of the classes on there to develop some skills that you can use in your free time outside of university and outside of your academic life and turn it into a hobby that you use to de-stress. So hopefully that was of use to you guys. And also don't forget to subscribe. I love my community here and I'd love for you to join if you haven't already. And follow me on Instagram as well, um, which is the junior doc. And I'd love to see you in my next video. Bye.